Oof, easy with the terrain. We want to land there. Not crash into it. Goodness. Hello everyone, Thranx is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky's Exploration Discovery Feed, where we're going to go to another undiscovered planet today and see what else there is to close out this system so near the Thranxian Expanse. Kind of a beautiful planet we just came from. Um, this two-toned atmosphere and array of violets Pretty, uh, pretty amazing. But we have no clue what awaits us on this unknown planet. Hmm. Viridescent. Activated copper. Probably strong meteorological conditions. Obviously, with the activated copper. There appears to be a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Some of that could be light scattering. We won't know until we get a little closer. Looks like we're heading for the sunrise side of the day-night Terminator. And it could be approaching storm-like conditions right now. Oh, anomaly is detected. A secret listening post? What have we here? Incoming message. This relay post appears to be broadcasting hollow terminus messages across the system. I may eavesdrop on the signal with the right frequency. Intercept. Friends, my ship is blank. No fuel. Cannot. Balaron? That's a translated word? Requires something. Please help. Can we land a little bit on the. Oh. Okay, well... I'm sure there's a photo op here, as there is... with most... deep space interactions. Curious. But I don't seem to have, like coordinates projected to my device. I wonder who's in need of fuel. Seemed like that's what they were saying. Pretty significant cloud structure forming up here in the upper stratosphere. It appears like we might be over the ocean, perhaps. Trying to scan for horizon in this soup, it's near impossible. Okay, we've got some refraction on the water. Okay, okay. We are indeed over the ocean. There's almost no land masses on the surface. We're looking for a place to set the ship down. So we can begin our oceanography here. Oh, hold on. Is this... Nope, these are atolls. Island. Everything just becomes a wash of colors in this mist. Oh my god, it's it's a torrential downpour of superheated rain. Yes. Bioluminescent coral. I can accept these terms. And large, whoa, large eels. Oh my goodness. Ever moving vented minerals. We have to brave our fears. We need to get closer and get a, a scale comparison to size. They're traveling away from us a good bit. There's more of them. 
Yep, same species, not a subspecies. They appear to be migrating almost. They're following some sort of current, perhaps? What are the odds that both groups would be traveling in a straight line like this if not if not being migratory? Oh, look at this. This creature was first encountered swimming in the milkworm seas of this planet, carried by the currents as much as by their fins. Their lives know no order, no system. They simply exist wherever greater forces have placed them. Scavengers they feed upon the downward drift of plankton. So, they are in fact, and they're waxy all over, that's interesting. They are in fact following the current, so there is a current heading in this direction. Look, we're coming up on some massive coral reef system up ahead of us. They're trying to get away from me. Okay, they're not, they're, they're very long, they're not particularly large. Okay, it looks like maybe the current stopped in this area? Hmm. Oh, the storm is clearing. Okay. Oh, here we go, here we go. So, with the night... No, no, they, they don't seem to be predatory in nature. I mean, I know the scanner said plankton, but we've seen creatures that eat plankton dive on fish before. But these decidedly are not. Look at them all, though. There are quite a few of them. The floor is relatively naturally shaped, about how I would imagine, maybe. Some rocky coral outcroppings, but it looks like maybe the current has changed directions with the setting sun. I guess, let me, uh... Let me just pop up and see, is there any, like, terrain nearby other than where we parked? It doesn't seem like it. I think we might have to go back. Yeah. It's okay, it's a relatively short drive. But we have no idea... Oh, no, no. Yeah, we're just going to smash right through you. <laughs> That's fun. Wish we had things to use the Nautilon cannon on. So we have very... Oh, it's still very steamy... ...in the air. Or, or the moisture, the fog in the air is relatively thick, even even at night without a, an active storm. We're looking at long-sighted birds. I'm thinking... Thinking we want to go to the day side, then maybe not like go back out to the deep ocean, but I wouldn't mind going to like a coastline. Ooh, not a lot of coastline to speak of. Let's head to this section here. Yeah, There's tremendously thick clouds. Not thick. I'm sorry. Widespread. They're they're, they're actually kind of flat. But, oh my. It's mountainous islands here. You know what? This is... 
This is an odd... <laughs> an odd little planet. Oof, easy with the terrain. We want to land there. Not crash into it. Goodness. As I feared, it's actually relatively difficult to see at a distance from all this moisture. The rain is pretty much non-stop. Partially domesticated already. And if we'd gone up to the top of one of those mountains, we'd likely not even be able to see where we are now. The water appears to be a sort of golden color, at least at a distance it does. Maybe we want to go down to the coastline. These are fairly interesting uh, islands, I have to say, though. Tall grasses regularly sheds its skin. The grass is a deep violet. The trees are a teal with a blue sky. It's already an interesting feel. When you add to the fact that each of these islands is like its own mountain, and what would be the low-lying area is is just ocean or, or lake. I'm guessing I'm guessing this is all salinated water though to be clear because it's so it's so open there's not much to trap it or keep it uh, fresh you know freshwater naturally being a product of rivers and lakes filling up from snow topped mountains um, melting in warmer weather hmm This grass is awfully purple. I would think that would confront me more than it does. Ooh. Some sort of giant mollusk. Salt-baked feldspar. These trees, though. I'm a fan of these trees. External maintenance. With metallic nodules. Yeah, look. You can see them. Or no, that's where the branches broke off? Oh, yeah. External maintenance. Whoa! That is a cool mineral. Fragile crust formed with jet pressure. Look at this thing. See, now that's that's a rock you could just walk you could just walk past and not even realize how awesome it is. Hmm. There's a lot of them up here. Okay, and we get some shrubs and some ferns. Cosmic radiation. Like, look at that up there. I almost... I mean... I know that we get what we get when we discover a planet, and that's half the fun. But I almost wish I could... I could design one, you know? But I suppose then, why would you ever travel anywhere if you could design the perfect planet, right? And what sort of madness would that be? Hand sculpting a planet? So it looks like we found every creature but one underwater creature. I'd like a planet like this with this constant rain and these incredible mountains and, and low-lying water areas to just be like covered in canopy and forests and just have it be like a tremendous rainforest all along like the mountains
I'm not sure what sort of underwater creature we've missed, but if there's a chance we can get all the creatures on this planet, I would like to. The water, though, yeah, the water's a big miss for me. This weird orangey, it comes across as murky. It makes me think like mud, and it's all kicked up. Uh, likely from the storms, you know? Kind of churning, like some kind of churning currents that sweep into these areas that have low-lying depressions and then swirl, and it just kicks up all the mud and makes the water all cloudy. Yeah, look how frequent these storms are. We just We just had one not that long ago. We've seen this where, oh, oh, if that's a crab and we found an extinct species, then we're not going to get what we wanted. And it looks like it is. Oh, it's a cool looking one, too. Whoa. Let's verify. Yeah, it still says 9 out of 10. All right, well... I think where are we at? We're at we have we have 5700 quicksilver. But I think rather than just kind of continuing this this planetary exploration in the traditional sense, I'd like to give us some objectives along the way. I'm thinking we're going to start doing maybe daily missions. It would be nice to start earning some Quicksilver and buying maybe a new suit of armor. I'm starting to get... At first I was always happy with the way we looked, and I'm starting to get to where I'm not happy with that anymore. Alright. There we go. That looks weird with our ship all tilted sideways. I don't think we're going to get a good image with this rainstorm. Let's at least uh, let's at least see what the the quest is at the Nexus. We haven't been in the Nexus in a while. Let's go check it out. Seems like... Oof. I mean, you know, the Hot Rod Fighters are nice, but that, that is a cool fighter. That, that's a nice one. Goodness gracious. So much is happening. Oh my gosh. So let me get to the Nexus. Construct an outpost. You know... Of all the <laughs> of all the daily quests, I'm probably the least into these. Yeah, I think we'll wait. I don't know if they cycle out over time, but I think we're gonna give that one a hard wait. I don't mind. Like we have the materials for it, but I feel like constructing an outpost just for the sake of constructing one makes us want to choose a location just to choose one and pick a planet just to pick one instead of being really motivated. 
Although, to be entirely 100% fair, we don't often get motivated to build an outpost, so... Maybe it's a worthwhile thing to experiment with? I'm not sure. I would like for this storm to settle, though, so we can get one good image of this planet. Preferably as we're flying through some of these valleys. Do we have some planets to name? Oh, we do. We do. And we're going to name this one Guff. <laughs> That's right. I um, I think you've asked enough, so we're going to do it. So the first planet, um, or the last planet that we found in the last episode that we forgot to name, the Murky Planet, we'll name that one um, Guff. There you go. Um, this planet, you know, maybe something tough. Be guff and tough. They're they're both interesting in their in their colors. The weather is more intense on this one. You know, though, for being for being a place that has... Oh, no, this one... Oh, it doesn't show it on this map, but it showed it during the scanner. So even though this planet has activated copper, it's, it's very much not a planet with extreme enough storms to get you storm crystals. All right, there we go. I mean... This... It's terrain generation. <laughs> it's something. I'll give that to you. You know what I think we should do? I think we should jump to another system. I want to try to cover lots of ground. I don't want to shortchange any planets. But I feel like we can... I feel like we can improve our pace of discovery a little bit. Or at least find some objectives. Something and we go to another system... And then we just happen to see, like, if we could find a system that's fully unexplored. That might be tough near the Thrinxian Expanse. I'm sure it exists, though. We didn't explore for that long here the last time. I'm sure we explored all these. Let's drop a hypercore in the hyperdrive. That's cheeky. That doesn't seem like that used a hypercore. I wonder if it took it out of my starship. Mm, it might have. So the real question... Do we have to go to one of these systems where we have a base established? I like these red star systems. Let's bounce around a little bit. Let's zip back and forth. I'm I'm really feeling these red starred systems. Um, I don't necessarily... I don't know. I'm more looking for something I might have not explored last time. Let's check this one out. Oh, relatively quick. First contact! We did it! Six planets in an uncharted system with a crimson stellar object. Let's go. I am about it. So the first thing we're going to do... 
no uh, uncharted system has pros and cons to it there's things i like about that and there's things i don't like about that uh the first thing that i want to do though in all honesty is i would like to visit the nexus because i'm not sure if just warping to another system changes your daily quest i feel like I know they save up like they wait for you to do them. That's why I have three of them saved up. But I feel like they change sometimes and it's a little bit like arbitrary, like the smallest thing might cause them to change. Ooh, yeah. A little short fighter with the top wing. That's fun. Ooh. Green and gold and blue. No, that's uh, not gold. That's like copper. Green and copper and blue. Look at those lights. Look at those wings. Look how the paint job is like... Yeah, it's like it's had aftermarket uh, work done. Like repairs and whatnot. I could dig it. That's... I mean, you know, is that the one I would pick for myself? No. Uh... Can I totally appreciate it as an awesome fighter? Uh, you bet. 100%. Like, all, all day long. I do like the solar panel explorers. I think those are pretty slick. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yellow. <laughs> it's like the bumblebee. Big old box hauler. That's fun. Do trading in that. See, I uh, we need to come to the to the Nexus more often. That's what we got to do. Are we gonna do Quicksilver stuff now? Should we? Oh, I'm looking at the time. Maybe we should. See, I like this. Being able to build your own mud hut, mud hut, bioluminescent flare cap toadstool, and the wizened stump. This is going to be great. Bespoke personal identification. Lonely. Dreamer. Oh, Dreamer. Thranx's. Or, or Thranx's iteration one. Like Traveler. We're just not earning enough Quicksilver. I wouldn't feel like I have to ration it and spend it so sparingly if we were just earning it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm, I don't think I'm ready to buy yet. I need to spend more time, like, looking. We don't really need these either. I think we're just going to check the daily and then be on our way. Hunt dangerous pirates. Yep. Initialize, please. No, I, I just want to join by myself. That's fine. I think I will look at some of our titles, though. Because, yeah, there's a lot of them. Timeless. I like Iteration 1. It kind of flexes how long we've been in No Man's Sky, but... Yeah, one of the original Travelers. I think that's cool, but, you know, it's time to change it up. We're not going to stay the same forever. I'm starting to feel the desire for change. We're coming up on the new year soon. Traveler of the Atlas... Timeless. Breathe deep. Live forever. What? 
Oh, this this is all lore stuff here. Thranks is prime. So in order to obtain our Corvax lore, we need to conduct um, uh, monolith observations on a Corvax uh, system. Hopefully a planet that has a lot of them. The Oh, the Thranks is of glass. See through Telamon's eyes. See, that's going to come from... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Those are some unique ones there. I think, ultimately... Thanks is of the depths. Thranks is starborn. Braved the darkest of derelicts? What? No, I think we'll go with starborn for now. I like that. That's kind of that's kind of neat. Uh again, we're we're spending borrowed time on this when really we need to get back to what we're doing. Looking at the time though, it looks like that's what we're going to get. And we're going to go hunt these pirates in the next one. I do hope you've had a good time watching. Because as always, I've had a good time playing. But until next time, take care.